trustees, honored guests, members of the faculty, colleagues, and our distinguished graduates. In a world where we work to be the most successful, in a world where we race to be the first, in a world where we do anything to be the best, I present to you, class of 2020, the strongest and most patient class ever graduated from AUC. There was a day when I bragged about being so lucky, waiting for my graduation date in 2020. I mean like 2020. Such a cool, even, neat, and smooth number. It would deserve to have a very smooth and neat year too, wouldn't it? Like every graduation class, we were waiting impatiently for that day when we say, yes, this is our last first day of classes. And we waited even more to rock that other day and say, yes, this is our last, last day of classes. But this graduating class of 2020, we have spent sleepless nights waiting for this day in the middle of a global pandemic. For us, online classes were not so fun. For us, we couldn't spend our last semester with our friends in our last few months before we graduate. For us, we were afraid to miss the chance to walk in every hallway, through every door, do our senior projects, make our last presentation, miss our last 8.30 class, find no parking, miss the bus just one more time in our last semester at AUC. All we were afraid of was missing the moment where we mark our final and most remarkable memories at AUC. We were afraid that March 11, 2020 had been our last day of classes. And unfortunately, it was. There were also times that we thought we might not have our commencement if we ever make it to our graduation in the first place. Now, we're finally here today after more than one year, representing the most patient class of AUC. If you're here listening to this today, then wow, we made it, we lived and the world didn't end. Congratulations, class of 2020, you made it. Yes, this past shaped who we are today, and we should be proud we made it through. But tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is more important. This was just an intense end to our beginning. Each one of us probably now started something new. Graduate studies, found a job, already did a career shift. It's fine. Now we got to be the real us, shape our own future, be who we are, and not what we're told to be. And in today's world, it is so important that we be the best. We are a generation who's so ambitious, and we always want to compete to be at the top. But I realized we're losing something so important doing this. We have been doing it over and over every day. We do it when we compete to get the best number of A's in a row, the best GPA in our class, and the best of everything we can. But we also do the opposite. We do it when we fight who got the greatest number of submissions. I got two midterms and a presentation in a day. You got three, I got five. I haven't slept for two days. Oh, you haven't slept for a week. Why? Why are we doing this? Why don't we remind ourselves of the core reason of what we're looking for? On being the best virgin and not being the most virgin of everything. We fight to be at the top of everything, no matter where it stands, and that's not what we should do. And because we forget why we're doing the things we're doing, and also how we do it, we end up doing nothing but comparing ourselves to others most of the time. Each one of us, engineer, scientist, artist, writer, regardless of your major, each one of us is unique in their own way. So let's give ourselves five minutes to think each night. Is that who I want to be? Am I satisfied with who I am today? And what can I do to, be, to change myself to be the best version of myself? So let's start analyzing, learning, educating ourselves about what we like. Let's shape our own self, forgive ourselves, and promise ourselves that we will do what we can do and what we believe we can do. So dear graduates, together, let's learn from our past, Live today and dream tomorrow about our own crazy dreams.
I won't be long, just bear, bear with me and I want to share one last point with you that might change the way you look at life. People see things differently and it's okay for all opinions to be right. Actually, yes, we do see things differently. Even when we think that we see things the same, there is no way for us to be sure. Remember when we were introduced to colors? We knew that colors are different, with each one unique. I might have a favorite color and you have another one. And that's the conventional way that people say how we see things differently. But how do I know that we see the same color? Maybe you see it differently. Can I see it with your own eyes? Red. I know that red is the color of an apple, the color of a heart. This color, how do I know that you see the same color? Maybe you see it differently. Maybe your eyes see it as my definition of purple. Yeah, and you will still say that an apple is red and a heart is red. But we will never know if we see it the same or not. So no matter how we think we see things the same, maybe we don't. When we were kids, we knew colors by examples. We knew that trees are green, and that's how I define green, and that's how you define green. But what if our eyes make me see green as your blue, and you see green as my yellow? And we will still agree that a tree is green. And that's how life is like colors. I can see success in a way. Someone else sees it in another way. And we will still think it's the same but it's not. You will never put on my eyes to see the way I see green, and I will never get into your mind to know how you see success. And the only thing that we can share is that we might both like something, even if it's different. Class of 2020, be you and be different. Thank you.